Okay, so for the first one, you want to look at the degree of the top. So that's degree three. And then degree of the bottom is degree one. So it's bottom heavy. So what's the asymptote if it's bottom heavy? None. Yep. Okay, the top one. You can't say y equals zero because that's different. Okay, y equals zero would be if it's if it's bottom heavy. So the two situ or the three situations you have top heavy, so it's top heavy, you do none. And if it's bottom heavy, you're gonna do y equals zero. And if it's the same, you're gonna do the ratio of the leading coefficients. So there's one of each type on here. Um, the second one, once you FOIL it out, what's the degree of the top going to be? Uh, two. two. Once you FOIL it out, what's the degree of the bottom going to be? Two. two. It's the same. So you take the ratio of the leading coefficients, one over one, one over one so it's going to be y equals one is your answer. And then number three. You have the degree on the top is 1, the degree on the bottom is 2, it's bottom heavy. So what is that going to be? Y equals 0. Next part, can you, if I write the function out, Y equals X plus 1, X plus 2 over X plus 1, X plus 2. Nope, I'll make that a 3. Okay, so three, can you find the whole, the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote? Okay, so the whole, what you wanna do is cancel out the common factors. So the whole is gonna be x equals negative one. The vertical asymptote, you remove the whole and set the denominator equal to zero. So the vertical asymptote is going to be x equals negative 3. The horizontal asymptote, we just did that where you want to look at the, the degree. So in this case, the degree is the same. So you take the ratio. Well, it's going to be y equals 1 because it's 1 divided by 1 because the degrees are the same. Okay, so from a table, determine if it's direct or inverse variation, or neither, so it could be direct, inverse, neither, and then you need to write an equation. So only write an equation if it's direct or inverse. Okay, so you want to check to see if you divide y by x, do you get the same number? So if you divide, it's direct. It's not direct. If you multiply, are they the same? Yes. So that means it's inverse. So inverse either looks like, or it looks like this, y equals k divided by x. So your k is going to be whatever numbers that you get when you multiply. So k is 2. Yep. So your equation should be y equals 2 over x. And then you can check it. If you plug 1 in, 2 divided by 1 is 2, it checks. If you plug 4 in, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, it checks. Okay, you can always check your equation. All right, so let's factor out an x out of the top. And then what, could you, what does the bottom factor out to be? What's the bottom going to factor out to be? x plus 6, x minus 6. So at the end, you can cancel out these two, but you cannot go any further. You can't cancel out the x's because it's stuck with the negative right here, the minus. Why am I struggling with... Oh, right. Okay, so here's another one. x squared plus 5x over x squared plus 7x plus 10.
Okay, so very similar to our last one, you're going to take out an X. So it's going to be X plus 5. Do your diamond. What are factors of 10 that add up to 7? 5 and 2. So your answer is going to be X over X plus 2. Okay, and you can't do anything else with that. Let's do a multiplying one. So 2X over 3 times 3x plus 6 over x minus 2. So can't factor out the top left or the bottom left. Make one big fraction bar. What can you factor out of this? A 3, so it's going to be x plus 2 over x minus 2. So what, the only thing that you can factor out of this one is the 3, okay? You cannot cancel out these two x's because they're stuck. You can't multiply it by a negative 1 because they're not backwards. You can't cancel out this 2 because it's stuck over here. So your answer in the numerator is just going to be 2x <laughs> quantity x plus 2 over x minus 2. You can, you can distribute that if you want, okay? All right, next one. Let's do a complex fraction. Complex fraction. Okay, know what to do if you have a complex fraction. All right, so this is a complex fraction. So you're going to flip over this. So it's going to be 2 over x plus 3 times x plus 2 over 3. Okay? You can't factor anything out. So it's going to be 2 times x plus 2 over 3 times x plus 3. Okay? No factor at all? No factor. If you want to, you could distribute this. So it's 2x plus 4 over 3x plus 9. Okay. All right, this one. Okay. Listen, the people that listen to this around the world will hear you. My name is Jordan. Jordan, your parents didn't sign a waiver. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so you're going to cross multiply and you're going to set them equal. So 6x plus 2, because I distributed. All right, now you want to get your x's on one side. So it's going to be 15 equals x plus 2. So x equals 13. And then make sure 13 is not a restriction. So that's the answer. No, one more. Okay, here, when we solve this, why don't you solve this one? 2p. Oh. Okay, I'm changing it over here. Just a minute. This is going to be a three. Okay, so check up, check up with the board that you changed it. Okay, we got to get a common denominator. What's your common denominator going to be? Um, 4P. 4P. So change this to a two. We don't need anything with this. Um, so you could add the tops together. So it's going to be 5 over 4p equals 3. Some of you might have multiplied this by 4p over 4p. Okay? So if you did that, you can cancel out your denominators and you'll have 5 equals 12p. So p equals 5 twelfths. And p equals 0 is a restriction. So that's your answer. Some people might have got to this part and cross multiplied, and that's okay too. So you get 5 equals 12p either way.